Welcome to the CQC video tutorial series. This is video four, Starter Kit Part Two. Welcome back, and we are now in Starter Kit Part Two. So we are going to pick up where we left off last time. And what we did last time was to create a few widgets. We had two command buttons, and remember those exist basically just to issue commands. And we had an image which shows the off and on state of the light. The image is a field Boolean image, which means that it's associated with a field, which we've selected down here. And that field is used to decide whether it's in a true or false state and show one image or another. And this is all nice. It works perfectly well, but we can actually do considerably better than that. We can really combine all of these into just a single widget, which would be more space efficient by far, and usually just as easy for the user, maybe even more intuitive. So let's actually create a new template here and we'll just create, we'll continue to create new ones for each video so that we can, so that you will have a, a back trail that you can go back through and look at these if you would like to. So let's do a new file and we'll call this one second test. And let's open that up. And what we would like to do here, uh, let me size that down again as we did before since we're a little short on space here. And what we will do is this time is create a checkbox and a checkbox is essentially a combination of the three widgets that we had before. It is also Boolean in the sense that it has a true or false state. And based on that state, it can display one image, one piece of text, and it has an action for that state. And then it has an uh, image text and action for the other state. So essentially having two actions gets us what the two buttons did and having two images gets us what the Boolean field image did. So we can combine it all together. So let's create a checkbox here. I'll do new and sorry, this is off your screen again, buttons and field checkbox. So that means it's a checkbox that is associated with a field as our image was in the previous video. And it doesn't really look the way we would like it to here. So we're going to do a bit of styling on it. This is just the default appearance of a checkbox, which is very similar to how they might look in a standard Windows application where there's a image to the left and text to the right. In our case, we will not use the text here. So we're gonna get rid of that and we're going to change the image to be the same as the lights that we used in the previous example. So we have it selected here. So that means that it's available to edit on the right over here. So first let's get rid of the true and false text, which are these two. So just empty those out. And let's also center the image. When we had separate image and text, we wanted to have them separated, but now we just want to center the single image by itself. And we now need to also select the field. So let's do that. And we'll select the same switch field that we did before, which was the family room main. And now we just need to change those images. So we can do that here uh, in the images option. And this brings up the image list editor. And you can see that there is an image for false and an image for true. There are others for specialized purposes. We won't use those here. So let's just change those, which we do by clicking this button here. And this lets us browse through the images that are available. And this, these are images that we ship plus any that you have created yourself. I happen to know in this case that those particular light images are under hardware icons and there's light off and let's select true and change that one to be the light on. So we now have our images and now what we need to do is just set the actions. And as we said before, there are two actions, one for each state. So we just need to set one to turn it off and one to turn it on. So under the action settings up here, We'll get the same action editor as before. And previously we didn't look at this up here at the top, the action events, where for a command button, there's only one event, which is just when it's clicked. But in this case, there's one for true and one for false state. What we'll do is set the true one so that it turns it off and the false one so that it turns it on. So basically it just toggles every time you click it. So this is the true command or the true action. So let's do commands, devices, field right as we did before. And we need to use that same field because we need to toggle the field that's being used to show our state. So let's click the family room switch or the family room main switch. 
And in this case, since it's true, we want the new uh, value to be false. And let's just copy that. So we'll do copy all, and then we'll go to false, and we'll paste all those in. And now we just change the value to true. So now when it's false, we will change the value to true. So now we have basically a toggling light switch. We don't have any text right now. We'll work on that in a subsequent video so that we can label them because we're going to have a set of these for the various lights that you want to be able to control. So let's actually save that. And again, this is off your screen, but I'm just doing file save. You can do control S. And let's go back to our interface viewer, which remember is under in the start menu under charm cart controller and then interface template viewer. Just skip the register for now. And I will log in using my information just as we did last time. And it goes to the previous one that we had open. Actually, for less privileged users, you will assign what it will go to. But for an administrator, it just opens the last one if there is not a, an assigned one for your account. So we need to open our new one here, which is second test. And now if we click it, it toggles the light on. And if we click it again, it toggles the light back off. So we have made our next step. And obviously it will be a lot nicer now to have just a series of these with the label for the light underneath it than it would be to have all three of those uh, widgets for every light. So this is just a much more efficient way to do it. And we'll just continue to refine things as we go in the same sort of manner. So we will pick back up again in the next video.